I'm Richard Curtin with rationalbroadcasting.com's 10%. We all know who my very special guest is. From New York City, the fabulous superstar, Caswell. Caswell, how are you? I'm good. Welcome back to Dallas. It's a really exciting weekend. It's Razzle Dazzle, and it is Gay Pride Month, and you are everywhere. Tell us a little bit about your tour. Um, well, right now I'm on the, my weekend tour. It's called the ADD Tour because I went to Austin and then Dallas and then Detroit. So I, I'm in the middle of my weekend tour. Tell us about your fashions. Um, well, this, uh, this shirt someone gave me. Um, uh, my friend Paisley Dalton, he's DJ, he gave this shirt to me. I think he got it at um, International Playground in the Lower East Side. Um, these are shorts. Um, some people call them basketball shorts. I got them at the NBA store. If you unzip, then I guess the team I'm representing is the Lakers. But I just got I like the color. I like gold. So, uh, But I put, there's a, sw not bedazzled, there's Swarovski crystals on the front and back. And I did this basically, I, I, I do tour a lot with Amanda Lepore, and she's Swarovski crystals head to toe, so I can't let her outshine me. So um, I have, uh, that's why I put them on here. And these are Adidas sneakers by uh, Jeremy Scott. And, and you really have an affinity for sneakers, don't you? So do I. I have a, a little thing for sneakers. Are Adidas your favorite? Um, well, I'm going to say they're my favorite because I work for Adidas right now, and I DJ a lot of their parties <laughs> and Y3. Actually, I really do like Adidas, and I, I, I like Y3, and they're all the same company. And I think that Y3 could possibly be like the new hip-hop sneaker of the future. I, I think they're molding into that. I really like Y3 sneakers most of the time. Um, I, and I really like Adidas, and um, I think I, I like that the change that they're making in their sneakers. Uh, so I don't know. We'll, we'll wait and see. I'm, I'm waiting for the new season. But uh, I, like, I like what they do with Jeremy Scott. But um, I, d I just also I like their basketball sneakers. I like that they're chunky. How about your underwear? Do you have a particular style that you like to wear? Yes, they're called boxer shorts, and I'm wearing a uh, gold boxer shorts right now to match my basketball shorts. I'm greasy, grimy, two-timey, but slip an animal. And if I want it, I get it. I eat that ass like a cannibal. I don't care if you think I'm dirty. I am dirty. Learn me. I'm masturbated till my KY faded. I'm exhausted. It's all of your face. Now, you're, you're really emerging as a, a sexual icon. Um, and really, I applaud the whole freedom of sexuality. And if we go back um, to being exhausticated, it's all over your face. In fact, I, I love the fact that exhausticated has really kind of, um, it's taken on a life of its own. I see it everywhere where people say, I'm exhausticated. Oh, yeah. And I do it. I know a lot of p other people do it. And so um, in that particular song, you say, um, eat that ass like a cannibal. And so it really is a... Um, a, a free spirit of sexuality, and you're emerging as a sexual icon. How how are you? Um, how do you feel about it? Um, I mean, I feel fine about it. I don't think it hurts. <laughs> um, um, maybe a sexual icon in the in the realm of you know the gay world. Uh, um. I think, but I mean, I think as far as I don't know if I want to go, you want to go back to that song that you're referring to. It's like at the time that I wrote it, I mean, I, I worked, you know, as a, as a host and promoting parties in um, the East Village. And at the time I was doing Boys Room and, you know, my whole life was just like, you know, whores and go-go uh, boys. And, you know, um, you know, I was doing like go-go boy competitions and like strip offs and, and then rapping every week at Boys Room and throwing parties there. So really that was my life like I really didn't really seem like I was so stuck in my bubble it really didn't seem like you know I mean I, I was probably going through a pretty big horse stage at the time too so um, I, I just it didn't at the time it did, you know I wasn't trying to prove a point it was just who I was so you don't feel like um, a sexual activist um I you mean you mean like a gay activist as far as being 
Well, I mean, I think for a while, especially in the gay community, I think that we had a guilt about being sexual and about being overtly sexual because of HIV, and there were so many people dying, and then there was the whole fear of getting HIV or spreading HIV, and so there was this toning back that, that gay men aren't having sex anymore, and then um, Caswell emerges, and it, it is free and it is in your face, and it is, I am having sex, I'm going to have sex, I'm going to enjoy it, and I, and I want you to enjoy it as well. So um, I, I, that's kind of where I'm going, is being a sexual activist. Um, I think that's a pretty good point. I, I think that, uh, for instance, uh, well, I don't think gay people ever stopped having sex. And I also think that um, I think as far as the media didn't really like <laughs> let anyone know that gay people were having sex or gay people. There was definitely a period of time that gay people weren't really in the media in general. Um, but you know, not compared to right now. You know, now's a pretty good time. But um, uh, you know, people refer to you know all over your face as like um, a gay sex song. But to me, it's probably one of the straightest songs I have, and I mean that just because I probably um, rap about gay sex with the same sense of entitlement that a straight guy raps about sex. So basically I'm not trying to I'm not trying to prove that I'm any different. I'm basically just trying to prove that I'm sane. And I'm but I'm not even trying to prove it. I mean this is it's just you know what I mean? I, I guess my motto is and I don't really think about it till I'm put on the spot, but my motto kinda is like if I don't treat it like it's a problem, then what's the problem? You know, so I mean I, I think I'm entitled to, you know, uh, have sex and feel good about myself no matter what, just as much as straight people are. But so far, as far as the music industry, straight guys are the ones that, you know, seem to have the entitlement of, like, you know, talking about having sex with girls and that they can do it because they're straight guys. And, and even, like, you know, even, like, you know, women have been shunned away from doing that, never mind gay guys. So, for, I mean, I'm just going to talk about it like it's not a problem because to me it's not a problem. Excellent. Well, it's not a problem for me either. So maybe we should join forces sometime. New York City, and your favorite place? Um, I mean, my favorite place in New York City is probably just my bed, because I got um, a Tempur-Pedic bed, and it's, I'm getting the best sleep of my life. So that's probably like where, we really, where I really like to be. And my favorite thing to do is just nothing. Like When I don't have a deadline, I can just like chill and not do anything. That's the most honest answer I can give you. But um, I really like uh, the parties that I like to go to are the ones that um, <clears throat> tend to have the most amount of freedom, not necessarily sexual freedom, but just like sense of uh, like fashion and color. Like I, I really like Sam Barsh's parties. I like her party Van Dam on Sunday. Um, I throw a party Boy Box on Tuesdays. I'm really happy with, and um, I throw a party Fagatronic on Thursdays. I'm really happy with at Eastern Block. <coughs> Excuse me, and um, I know there's a lot of good parties right now. Lady Fag just had a really hot party on Saturday night at a uh, uh, Drom. Uh, where the old opening was on Avenue A and 6th Street. And um, that's pretty much it. I mean, and then I work on Fridays, too. So, I mean, I'm either, like, DJing there. I have about three residencies. And, like, you know, but I, li I, like, uh, I like to travel a lot. I'm away, like, every weekend. And, and you really are. You're very busy. One of, one of the questions that I get most of, the, most of the time when I tell people that you're coming here, and they ask, are you going to talk to him? They want to know what it's like working with all that eye candy. And thank you for, for, for providing it in your videos, all of Ice Cream Truck, and um, Get Your Money Back, or Get My Money Back. Um, you're working with eye candy. So what, it, what is it like working with all these hot boys? I mean, to me, it's just like a, a night at a club or a night at work. I mean, to, it, I didn't even really think about it before I did Ice Cream Truck. I was just trying to do a quick video on a snicker bar budget, you know what I'm trying to say? So like I was just, and it's the oldest trick in the book. I mean, I work in clubs. You want to get people to stay, you want to get people's attention. You get go-go boys. These are the go-go boys that me and Marco knew and were friends with in the clubs. And I also wanted the song to be dedicated to like the hot Latino boys that hang out on my street in the East Village with their shirts off, you know, around the ice cream truck. So I, I, I wanted to have like a Latin feel to it. I, I made my, my, I got like a, ma with makeup, I made my skin a little, I tried to make it a little darker. I wanted to even be like, oh, like when you look at me, like what race are, like it didn't really work, but that was kind of like the vibe I went for. Like I really wanted to give to a New York uh, Latino feel. So that's, you know, I'm r I got what I wanted. Well, we're, we are all certainly enjoying, enjoying your videos. The question is, did you get your money back? I'm 
still getting my money back. <laughs> this is Richard Curtin. I'm with the 10% at rationalbroadcasting.com. Thank you, Caswell. We really appreciate you being here. Appreciate being here. Bye.